the 35th one, it, it's the temptation mystery. Um, I didn't have Wi-Fi, so I thought, let me just get an illustration or two before we start. And uh, Thomas A. Kimson once said there, fire tries iron and temptation tries who? Who does temptation try? A godly man. Temptation normally goes for godly people, isn't it? It seems like, why is this temptation coming my way? Sometimes you think, especially when you're younger. An unknown source, there was once this said, the thing that makes men and rivers crooked is following the line of least resistance. And I think that God's people are not to follow the line of least resistance in most things. So be very careful in that. So, tell me, what is the best way to deal with temptation? Don't, don't look at my notes, eh? I'll give you a big, big hiding. <laughs> How? To try to be better, okay? How do you deal with temptation? Run. Run. Good one, very good one, sorry. Pray, okay. Use the word. Block it in the name of Jesus. Yes, sorry. Sorry. Resist. Very good. Rebuke. Good, good, good. All good. But not great. I want a great one. <laughs> the best way to deal with Temptation is not to deal with temptation in the first place. And you might say, but that's silly, but that's not. Let's get to the Word of God and see what the Word of God says, because God is very clever. And He puts things in His Word so that we can understand and know that we are in a position that we're able to overcome temptation or resist temptation. But... How, what is the best way to deal with it? And that's what we want to have a look at today. Who of you know the Lord's Prayer? You know the Lord's Prayer? Okay, let me put it a different way. Who of you do not know the Lord's Prayer? Any of you? Who knows verse 13? And lead us not, say it with me, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. It's on the screen there. You can look on the next slide there. This is the Lord's Prayer. And the next one, there you go. And lead us not into temptation. Now, I want to ask you a question. Can God lead you into temptation? Hey? Can God lead you into temptation? <laughs> okay, let's say the Lord's Prayer again. That verse. And who are you praying to? We pray to God and we say, and lead us not into temptation. Right, now I ask you the question again. Can God lead you into temptation? Obviously. Obviously he can. Yet most, I guarantee you, if you ask most Christians, they're going to say, no, he cannot. Yet that means that we babble that prayer and billions of people literally babble this prayer and do not even know what they pray. And they pray to God and they say, lead us not to tem temptation. And then you ask, can God lead you into temptation? Then they say, no. But you've just say, said, but God, please don't lead me into temptation. Hence he can. And then we're like, but how does that make sense? Let me explain it a little bit further to you. Can God lead you into temptation? Yes. Why? You prayed that. And lead us not. But then how come? Matthew 4 verse 1 it says there. And Jesus was led by who? The Spirit of God. He was led by who? God. Into the desert to be tempted by? It does not say, and Lord do not tempt me. That's not what the prayer says. It says, don't take me or lead me into a position where, me, where I may be tempted by? Satan, because Satan is the only one that can tempt. God never tempts. Okay, Let's make that very clear. There's a major differentiation between those two. Leading you to a place where you can be tempted is different. 
Okay? And here, Satan comes and he's the one that tempts. And the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the desert to be tempted by Satan because he's the only one that can tempt us. Because God will never ever tempt us. He never can tempt us. And he never will because that is not his nature. But that is Satan's nature to a T. And he will go for those that are most godly. As we read in that little amazing little one-liner there. The Bible says, Matthew 6 verse 13, And lead us not into temptation. And all of us pray that. And how often do you pray? Lord, would you please not lead me into a position where Satan has the ability to tempt me in whatever area of your life that you are most vulnerable? Who have you ever prayed that? We pray many things, oh Lord bless my cat and bless my dog and heal this and heal that. But do you pray, Lord protect me, do not lead me into a position where I may fall. Do you ever pray that? So we need to change our prayer life because that is one of the major characteristics of the Lord's Prayer. There's a few lines, like six, seven lines. And that is one of them that we are to pray. Lord, I ask you, don't lead me into a position where I can be tempted by Satan. Why? Because nine out of ten times, if you are led into a position of temptation, what is going to happen? Why? Because we are not me we are not God. We are not God incarnate. The Holy Spirit leads Jesus into the desert to be tempted by Satan. Did he fall? No. In his most vulnerable time in life, he still didn't fall. So that we could see that actually he's gone. Because every single one of us would have fallen. Changes the stones into bread. We would have said, yes, wing, boom, I'm hungry. 40 days, I'm, now I want to eat. All of us would have done that, right? All of us would have fallen. And he does that so that we can learn that we are not him, that he is God, and we need him in our lives. And that truly he is Christ Jesus, the Messiah. That is why God leads him into the desert. To show us that he is God and to show us that you can overcome temptation. How? By resisting. Some of you said maybe by rebuking and all of these kind of wonderful things. But uh, normally when you in temptation, 9 out of 10, you fall. So then what is the mystery? Then how do we prevent getting into that situation where we can fall? That to me is more the million dollar question. And so I want to read Proverbs 5 verse 3 to 8. Now I'm well aware this is about sexual sin and the seduction of a woman with a man etc. And that I'm well aware of that. But there's a key in this. That the world has not picked up. And we have not picked up. And you youngsters should be paying me a million dollars for this teaching. And those people that are walking in the door should pay me a million dollars for this lesson. <laughs> right, can we read it? Are you ready? This is what the word of God says. And God is super clever. And that's why we worship him and can't help but worship him. Proverbs 5 verse 3 to 8 says, For the lips of an adulteress drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil. Smooth. And honey is very sweet, isn't it? Lovely. Okay? But in the end, she is bitter as gall, sharp as a double-edged sword. And what can a double-edged sword do to you? Destroy you just like that. Gone. And here it says that her lips drip honey. It's like, whew. and every single one of us understand that temptation. Even sometimes, women to men, you're tempted. This is what the Bible says. But the end. She is, she is bitter as gall, sharp as a double-edged sword. She'll destroy your life. That's what it's saying. Verse 5. 
Her feet go down to death. Her steps lead straight to the grave. And this is the tragedy of temptation, whatever that temptation may be. Not, even, not just sexual. Any form of temptation that is against the will of God, when you fall for it, will lead down this ro road. And it will destroy your life when you choose to submit to it. Verse 6. She gives no thought to the way of life. Her paths are crooked, but she knows it not. How sad. She does not not even aware of it. However, we as the church of God should be aware of what is godly and what is not godly. Verse 7. Now then, my sons and my daughters, listen to me and do not turn aside from what I say. Do not try to go against what I say. Don't maybe, you know, I'll get away with this or maybe I can. Uh, uh, uh. Do not turn in any way from what I'm about to instruct you. Verse 8, and here we get the amazing key. Keep to a path far from her. Do not go near the door of her house. And there we get the answer. And what is the answer? Give me the answer. Keep away. Stay away. Okay. Sorry? Avoid. Avoid what? Avoid temptation. Okay, how do you do that? Look the other way. Look the other way, okay. <laughs> I like it. Keep, keep focused on? On your path, okay. Don't go down the a path that is yes, okay. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Don't go alone. Okay. <laughs> So go down the path, but just don't make sure you don't go alone. Okay, I understand. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Any other pearls of wisdom? Sorry? Can one pray? Yes, very much so. But I think, I think if you have the Spirit of God within you, you are aware this is... Your spirit will not gel you. You, you know. He, he, it's almost like he taps on your car and says, uh, uh, you shouldn't be doing this, or don't go down this road, or isn't it? Now, here is the key. If you look on the next slide, what does it first say? Please answer me. What did the previous slide, slide say? Keep to a path far from her. In other words, it starts with a path. Let me switch on this thing that I can. It starts with you, uh, staying away from a path of temptation that will lead you there. And this is the problem. All of us need to understand it starts there. Do not even... Do not even contemplate of going down a path that will lead you to a door. And that's the next one. It said, do not, and do not go near her door. Can you go the next one, please? Why is this thing not working? There, to a door. And this is the problem, is that we, don't, we go down paths that we know we shouldn't, and what ends up happening? We get to a door and we think, sure, this chick is cool. And we open the door that we shouldn't open. And what's the next one that comes? Temptation. And we tell you, temptation takes it, its effect. What happens? The next one. We fall into sin. The key, however, is th that is not sin. Every single one of us are tempted, including Jesus. He was tempted, right? The key is that that's not the problem. That's the problem. But we do not even want to get to that point because we are not Jesus. That's why he says, pray to me. 
that I will not lead you to in, into a position where you can even get there. Because when you get there, 9 out of 10, you're going to fall. In other words, we need to, here, not even go down the path that will lead to the door where we can be tempted. Because if we get to this point, there's very few of us. In fact, when you're younger, none of us that are strong enough. Next slide. Who of you think that you are stronger than temptation? Who have you been severely tempted in your life? Do you know why? You went down the wrong path. And you opened a door you shouldn't have. Isn't it? And that is the key. That I, and As we get older, there's less and less temptation in our lives. But unless you relay this truth to your children and to your children's children, they're going to follow the same route that maybe you followed or that their grandparents followed, or whatever the case may be. This world is becoming more and more godly, godless because they say, oh, you can, go down, you can go down any path, no problem. Open any door in your life. Anything goes. Now, what happens, however, when you have opened that door and you are tempted? Or so, because you must know Satan is the tempter and he's going to go for the righteous. So let's say you're in a position of temptation. What happens after temptation? You hit this point in your life. We are made out of spirit, soul and body, right? And let's use... The illustration, here you see this beautiful girl, or even your girlfriends. Whoa, the spirit, the Bible says, is willing, but the flesh is... <laughs> bam. Spirit is willing, but the flesh is... <gasps> not very strong. It give, in other words, it gives into temptation very easily. Right? And we need to be aware of that. Okay? Then it says there your soul. Your soul is your mind, your will and emotion. And here you have this beautiful woman in front of you and temptation is right at knocking on your door there and you've opened this door and now you're in a position where you can actually take advantage of the situation and your mind says, oh man, just imagine. Oh, And then your will starts saying, yes, no, yes, no. Can you see that? Hello? And your emotions say, <whistles> She smells so beautiful. She looks... Uh, yeah. Do you understand? And what ends up then happening is when that takes place, is you end up sinning. And all of us understand what this is. All of us. And I'm not saying just in the sexual realm. I'm saying in any temptation. When we give any form of temptation the time of day. And that is why you said we need to resist. We need to resist temptation when it comes. And this is the difference with Jesus. When temptation came, he resisted. He spoke the word of God. And eventually the devil left him. And then after, what happens after sin? The Bible says... And her path leads down to death, to the grave. It is never good when we sin. Man, it looks as sweet as honey. It looks super awesome. And believe it or not, the Bible says it is for a time, but it's very short-lived. In other words, not worthwhile. James 1 verse 13 to 15, it says, When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted, listen, each of us is tempted when by his own evil desires he is dragged away and enticed. He opens the door and he allows the temptation to entice him and grab a hold of his heart 
grab a hold of his will, of his emotions, and say, yeah, 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 uh, and we give in. Then after desire has, has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, gives birth to death. Exactly as I've drawn on that diagram. And it eventually destroys our lives. And sadly, some temptations affect us more than others and destroy our lives more than others. And some of you know paths that you've gone down that you're still reaping the repercussions thereof. Psalms 141 verse 4 says, Let not my heart be drawn to what is evil. And this is a prayer. Lord, don't allow my heart to be drawn towards ungodliness. To take part in wicked deeds with men who are evildoers. Let me not eat their delicacies. And are delicacies nice to eat? Yes. But it's very short-lived. Hello? You see this amazing five-star meal in front of you. Some of you might have enjoyed things like that and you pay thousands and it's here in front of you, and you, wow, it's plated so beautifully, and you consume it, and how, was it delicious? Yes. And for how long was it delicious? Until the indigestion. Till the indigestion. <laughs> <laughs> but you understand, it's very, very short-lived. Sin is not worth the price you pay in the long term. It is not worth it. And that's why David says, to, says in Psalms 51.10, Create in me a pure heart, a clean heart, O God. And all of us should pray that. Lord, I don't want my heart to be inclined towards godlessness or these forms of temptation. Would you come and purify my heart? Because it's our heart that causes us to... I want that. And we need to say, Lord, come and purify my heart. It's on the next slide there. Come and create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me, a steadfast, a secure spirit that will not be inclined towards godliness. Because the spirit is strong, but the flesh is super weak. And that's why we are told not to live by the flesh, but to live by the spirit. Why? Because you can overcome when you are led by the spirit of God. But in the flesh you will fall every time. And one thing that I think all of us have realized, when we've fallen to whatever temptation that may be, you must know who was in control. The flesh was, and not the spirit. Because the spirit will help you overcome, but the flesh will not. And the flesh is super strong. And I don't even have to explain that. You're all of age that you can know what I'm talking about. But please note, I don't want it just, you just to think it comes to the sexual realm. It is every realm. Any form of temptation this applies to. Any single one. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 12 to 13, it says there. So if you think you are standing firm, in a, if you think that, well, you can resist anything, hey man, I'm the, be careful that you do not fall. Never get to a position of arrogance thinking, well, Come, bring it on. I can do this. You bring it on, you're going to see your butt. Do not be arrogant. Always be humble and say, Lord, I'm a man and I need your protection. And cry out to him. Say, Lord, lead me not into temptation. But deliver me from the evil and his onslaught in my life. Because his onslaught is way worse on godly people than on ungodly people. Be careful. That you don't fall. Then it says there verse 13. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. Do not think that well you're the only one that's going to go through this temptation or that temptation. All of us will be tempted. And most of us have gone through the same temptations in life. Or will go. For those of you that are younger. And God is faithful it says. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. How awesome is God? God promises, I won't allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able to be. 
But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. What an incredible promise. That means that even though you have gone down the path, you shouldn't. And you've opened the door, you shouldn't. And here comes the temptation slap in your face. He says, I, even in that situation, I can help provide a way out. And here is my next slide. And let's just go through it again. So you have temptation, and after temptation, hits your soul, will, and emotions, your heart, and you now, uh, should I, should not? And if you do, you end up falling, and then the result is this. However, God says, I will, for my people, provide a way out. And he says, there is a way out for all of us. And that way out will always lead to life. And when you choose not to submit to temptation, and you resist, and you tell the devil, the word says, you will not sleep with a woman before she's married. Hence, I will not do it. Guess what? There, he gave you a way out. And what you're going to do? Choose that, and then you'll have life. Now, how do you do it in reality? That is so easy to talk. Hello. That is super easy to talk. That is so easy in reality to talk it. But how do you live it out in everyday life? That is the key. So God says, I will provide a way out, even if you get to this point here. But the choice still remains your and my choice. And which is going to win the war? The man that is led by the Spirit of God. Not the man that's led by, led by the flesh. If you're led by the flesh, I guarantee you, you will lose that fight. And lead us not into temptation. But the Bible says, but deliver us from evil. Now I want to come back to that slide that we had just now. So, he has the path. Okay? Now, I don't know what temptation that you're most vulnerable in. But I know one thing is that Satan will go you in the area that you're most vulnerable. If you're attracted to women, he'll put women on your path. Guaranteed. If you're tempted to gamble, he's going to put gambling apps on your phone and all those things that are going to come in your face. Hello. What, what are other things? Give me some other things that... Sorry? The fridge door. <laughs> what are other things that can tempt you? The fridge door, you know. Shopping. Shopping to, to appease their, I don't know, gratify their desires for more, I don't know, appease an emptiness in their soul. What are other things that we're tempted in? Drugs. Drugs is a major. Sorry? Drugs is a major. The fridge door for some of you, as was mentioned. The Bible says, do not even go down that path. Because once you've gone down that path, you'll eventually hit the door. Okay? Where you've got to now start thinking, well, do I open this door or not? Yes. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that is true. However, how then do we first deal with this path and this door? That I don't get into a point where I am tempted. How do I get to that? If I have a problem with overeating, I looked, uh, actually I was, uh, I sometimes go on Facebook, then I look a few, th few minutes and, then, boop, and this guy, he, I mean he was not as fat as a pig because a pig cannot even get that fat. And I'm sorry if it offends some of you, but uh, there, there's n I'm not even exaggerating. A young, young man, young, I mean his dad would bring him incredible amounts of food. 
So what would he do? He would be the enabler. So he would come down the path, come there, bring, and he would put, I, I didn't even count how many burgers, five or six burgers and chips and all of it, for one person. <coughs> that is putting temptation there. If I only put one burger and a chip and a Coke for you there, well, what's he going to do? Tough turkey. So even he says he doesn't know why he brings him all of these, all this food. He just keeps doing it. Why? And I think you are the enabler. You are the problem here. Because he cannot even work to afford. That. We need to make sure that we do not have the ability to make this choice here. So, let's say you have a problem with pornography. Another one. Hello, it just came up now. If you have a problem with pornography, what should you be doing? How do I, if I have a problem with pornography and I'm falling, how am I going to make sure that I do not even go down this path or have this door, an opportunity to open the door? Well, I've got a phone and I've got a computer, so I've got the path, but I don't want to get to the door anymore. So, I'm, I'm going to have to put in an app that will prevent that even opening. I'm going to have to put an app that restricts age, you have an age restriction on it. Hello? I know one pastor that I counseled the once that had a major problem in this area. And let me tell you, there are many pastors that have problems in this regard. Okay? And he had a major problem till eventually he did not even have a computer in his home. Why? Because he had to put stringent, and this is the problem, we need to put stringent limitations that we do not have the ability to fall. You have to go so far as to say, well, how do I eliminate those doors in my life or even temptations? So if you have a problem with overeating, you have to buy way less, cut your budget that you cannot. Do you understand? There, 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 are, there are obvious things that we need to put in place. If you have a problem with pornography, you make sure that you do not have the ability to have a device that can feed you that. Simple as that. Otherwise, you will fall. Guaranteed. Young man and young woman, do not close the door. You're not married yet, don't close the door. If you're on a bed sitting, lying there watching TV or on a couch, do not close the door. It must always be open. We had that rule in our home. We were never allowed to close our door. Never. Because the flesh in that regard is super weak. And once we've gone down this path, and we knock on that door, and we are started, we are already at the point of temptation. You must know if you do not, if you are not highly secure in your relationship with God, and you know His word, that you are in a position to resist the devil, you are going to fall. But the key with any form of temptation is first to deal with this. Don't even go down that road. Don't even go down that road. Do not even get put yourself in a position where you can knock on that door. However, there are certain temptations that you do not have that opportunity where it goes straight from, doesn't even have that, it's just there, boom. Then you need to say, Lord, don't just lead me, not lead me into temptation, because if I'm there, what does it say after that? But deliver me. Would you deliver me from falling? Would you deliver me from the schemes that Satan has to entrap me in this area of my life? But the greatest key and mystery is that we need to make sure that we do not get to the point of temptation. Because 9 out of 10, it is better to deal with temptation by not dealing with it in the first place. Because we are not God. Nine out of ten we will fall. 
God never did, but we are not God. And hence we need him, and that's why we cry out to him. And that's why we should think he is just incredible. I look at God and I think he's incredible. Because I cannot overcome like he did. Yet I desire to, my heart is to desire that and to want that. Yet I know at the same time I'm also human. Yet I want to be led by the Spirit of God. And even Paul said, I do that which I do not want to do because of sin that still resides within me. And we need to pray and say, Lord, would you come and eradicate all sin and evil within my heart that you, and purify my heart that I may have a contrite, pure, clean heart before you, that I would be inclined to godliness and things that would bring pleasure to your heart and not bring those delicacies that were, are very short-lived and destroy my life. So, how do you deal with temptation? Don't deal with it in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> because even when you're old you can still have temptations like games 24-7 and TV and do nothing no no whoa, 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 whoa. may the old folk impart into the younger folk hello that's what the bible says you are never retired old folks you are to impart into the younger men the older men, and the older women are to part into the younger women. The problem is, the older women think they've got nothing to give, and it's a lie. And the younger women are desiring that mothering and nurturing, actually. And men, they are desiring the wisdom that comes from age. And you and I, and some of you great-grandpas, have learned things that even I still haven't learned. And you can say, hey, watch out. Be careful of this. Do this. How about looking at that in your life? And so I want to encourage you, old folks. Do not think that you cannot impart. You can. And you are to impart till the day you die. And every one of us, I want to encourage you. Those that think you are strong, be careful. Sin is knocking at your door, let me guarantee you, if you think you get to that point. But let me encourage you to go and teach others how to deal with temptation by not dealing with it, with it in the first place.